So today we are going to discuss about the shear strength of the soil, right? Shear strength determination of the soil is very important because it is a very much very uh, reliable engineering property in designing and everything, right? So shear strength can be found using four different methods: direct shear test, vane shear test, triaxial test, and unconfined compressive strength. Uh, a direct shear test, vein shear, triaxial and unconfinity, it depends on like it varies with what type of soil we are using, right. So uh, suitability of direct shear test, it is suitable for cohesionless soil or sandy soils you can say and vein shear test is suitable for clay soils, triaxial test is suitable for basically all, all the type of soils, sandy, clay and every type of soil and unconfined compressive strength UCS is suitable for cohesive soils only that is clay soils, right. So today uh, now we will be discussing about the direct shear test, determination of shear strength using direct shear test or also known as box shear test right. So it is also known as box shear test, uh, you will come to understand while we are performing test why it is called box shear test right. So uh, in direct shear test before uh, going to the actual experiment we need to understand what is shear strength right, shear strength is the strength that is taken by the soil okay. Generally uh, soil exhibits a different and unique behavior when it is applied under any type of fluid right. Soil fails only in shear right. So that is why we can see more oftenly the shear strength of the soil. You cannot see like um, like uh, torsion strength of the soil, you cannot see twisting uh, strength of the soil or any type of soil, any other type of soil right, uh, any other strength because it will fail in strength, shear stress only whatever the load you apply it will fail in shear stress only right. So that is why uh, the shear strength of the soil is very important. So we can study using different methods so, so while taking the DST uh, direct shear test the shear strength basically depends on two major important factors one is the type of soil of course the type of soil whether it is cohesive or non cohesive and second one it depends on the <coughs> frictional resistance right. So if there is more frictional resistance between the particles and it also depends on the cohesive nature of the particle right. So if there is more cohesion we can call as co cohesive soils right and if there is less or no cohesion then we call it as cohesion less soil okay. Basically shear strength depends on type of soil cohesive or non cohesive right. So imagine if it is <coughs> sandy soil we need to find the shear strength of sandy soil what will happen to this a C value C will be 0 right because sandy is cohesion less means C will be 0 and it will depend on normal stress that we apply and the frictional resistance of that particular soil sample right. So basically it is as simple as that it will depend on C and pi. C and pi are also known as shear strength parameters. This C and pi are very very important in estimating uh, the bearing capacity of the soil right. So we have bearing capacity formula QU, QU in terms of C and pi right C 1.3 C and C plus uh, whatever the formula we have right for strip footing, uh, square footing and whatever it is in order to find the estimate the you know bearing capacity of that particular soil we definitely need C and pi, C and pi could be formed using these four methods right. So in uh, coming to direct C DST in particular okay, so this is the box that we use for performing uh, vane shear test okay. So we'll, uh, we'll collect the sample, uh, soil sample, we'll collect the soil sample using this cutter okay, we'll place and we'll uh, just uh, rammer into the soil and we'll take the soil sample from this and we'll place this uh, soil sample into this separatable mold okay. So here you can see this is separatable and this is in the form of box okay that is why we call it as box shear test right. So we will place the whole setup into the equipment and uh, we will apply some normal stress, uh, normal loading into this onto this and at the same time we will see at what shear stress at what stress shear stress it is failing okay the normal stress is constant and we will start we will increase the shear stress that is been applied on the sample and we will note the uh, value of shear stress at what shear stress the sample is failing right we will repeat for 2 or two, 2 to 4 iteration okay so this is a uh, shear box okay so we we have i have already placed the sample in here okay we need to collect the sample from the uh, field okay by means of rammering same as we did for core cutter method we'll take the soil sam sample and uh, we'll directly place here and we'll push using this 
using this metal, uh, metal ok. So, we will push into this one and ok basically it is removable ok we can remove this thing ok and we have clamps here this clamps we can you know uh, by adjusting the clamps we can create the space and it is helpful in shearing while do, doing the experiment we will come to understand in brief ok. So, this is the whole setup for uh, shear uh, you know direct shear test ok. So, from this test we will be getting the you know we will place like this and we will apply we will we'll apply the normal load onto this one ok we will apply normal load and we will apply some uh, for uh, for standard normal load we will apply some sort of shear load right and we will draw the graph between normal and shear stress right we will uh, draw the graph between shear stress and the normal stress normal force by normal area shear stress by shear area shear stress by shear area we will get the graph something like this right. So, we will get the graph and we will it will uh, uh, this value the this intercept will be uh, called as C this is what we call uh, right here right C is the cohesion this is the intercept and uh, we uh, this angle will be pi angle of internal friction C pi and we also know the value sigma, uh, sigma uh, like normal stress at failure for every condition right. So, we have C we have sigma for uh, failure condition and we know pi. So, we substitute all the values in uh, C plus uh, sigma tan pi we will get the uh, shear strength of the soil using direct shear test. We have seen the importance and uh, everything now we will perform the test. So, this is the whole setup for uh, direct shear test ok. So, this is an automatic machine ok. So, here we can see uh, this proving read again ok. So, it will measure the shear stress actually ok. This will measure the shear stress. Uh, we will be applying the force from this way ok. The material that which we have put the soil which it will split in two layers ok. So, this is the main disadvantage of uh, direct shear test the uh, angle of failure is predetermined it is horizontal right. So, that is the major disadvantage ok. Anyhow uh, it will move like this and it will note the shear stress with uh, like we can calculate that shear stress which is connected to this right. So, initially before uh, you know starting and we can also uh, you know measure the di like deflection that is not important, but uh, we can uh, measure that thing also ok and uh, we need shear stress and shear normal stress ok. So, here we can see we are we are applying the normal stress using this lever arm ok. Initially I am applying 0.2 kg of normal stress like 0.2 kg of normal load and we can calculate normal stress also right. So, and uh, this is the whole setup now I am going to apply the load like I am going to apply the shear shear force onto this and we can see uh, the like uh, failure load right. So, in it, it will see it is increasing and after some uh, certain point it will start you know decreasing it indicates that the material is failed ok. So, yeah. So, we can uh, yeah we can note that reading here ok. So, uh, the reading here it is showing in kilo newtons, but here it is in kg. So, we can convert that ok with respect to the standard you know uh, you know conversion given by the manufacturer we can derive that right. So, with respect to that we need to convert both the loads into kg per centimeter squares both normal and uh, shear stress and we need to plot the graph and through that graph we can come to know the value of C and pi and using the formula of shear stress tau is equal to C plus sigma into tan pi we can calculate the shear strength of the soil using direct shear method ok. So, uh, this is the observation for uh, shear uh, direct shear test ok. So, here we can see the figure ok. It, uh, uh, here we can see all the uh, apparatus that I have shown uh, in laboratory and here are the parts of that particular machine direct shear test ok. The area of the specimen which we have taken is 6 by 6 that is uh, 36 centimeter squares ok and the volume of the specimen is 46.653 centimeter cube and uh, the moisture content of that particular soil sample is measured as 7.1 percentage and the proving read, uh, reading constant for the machine which we have used for uh, uh, DST is 2.5 kilo newton right. So, these are all the observations ok. So, here comes the actual readings ok. So, first we have normal stress normal stress is constant ok. We have uh, first we have applied with 0 0.5 kg per centimeter squares and then we increased up to 2.0 centimeter kg per centimeter squares ok and for every 0.5 kg centimeter squares 
kg per centimeter squares we have noted the proving reading okay okay actually this shows the shear force okay so that is uh, 1.5 kg in case of uh, 0.5 kg per centimeter squares of normal stress and it is uh, <coughs> you know in increasing right so uh, we, uh, we are converting this uh, shear force into shear stress okay uh, how do we convert force based uh, force into stress we'll just divide it by the, uh, divide by the area of the specimen that is uh, zero, uh, 36 uh, centimeter squares so that is how we uh, get uh, kg per centimeter squares of shear stress right so uh, this is simple as simple as that okay now we are going to draw a graph between normal stress and shear stress okay so the graph will be something like this we will take shear stress on uh, y axis and normal stress on x axis okay and we will plot the values and we will get the graph something like this okay so this is the graph and here we can see this is uh, intercept c okay so the value of c here is 0 0.03 kg per centimeter squares and uh, the pi value is <coughs> nearly 41.9 degrees while measuring uh, using any protractor or something uh, we can calculate the uh, pi value okay uh, we'll know, we know the value of c and we know the value of pi and we also know the value of uh, sigma right the final uh, normal stress that is being applied on the soil sample right so if you substitute all the values in c plus uh, sigma into tan pi we will get this value of shear strength of the soil as uh, 1.82 kg per centimeter square right so we will be reporting this value as the shear strength of the soil using DST right that is direct shear test right thank you